hey guys welcome back to my channel um i hope you are all well just getting myself a bit comfy so given that it is father's day i i kind of wanted to do this video um to just sort of have a chat with you guys um share my testimony of fatherlessness um and also hopefully to give somebody some encouragement out there so you've got like Father's Day and you have Mother's Day and especially now we have social media, we see like people's declarations of, you know, their adoration and, you know, or admiration towards their parents and they talk about how much their parents have done for them. But what do you do when you're in a situation where either, you know, you no longer have a parent around or um, you don't have a great relationship with that parent and these days can be you know the celebration of father's day or mother's day can be really really difficult for a person i'm just going to talk about like my experience and yeah and how i've been able to heal um and how i am healing from fatherlessness um so just to give you guys a background um so my parents split when i was they were married and they split when i was i think i was two years old um, and then from the ages of 5 to 21, I didn't see my dad. Um, I had no idea where he was. I knew his name, um, but that was about it. I didn't know where he was, where he'd gotten to. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know, know anything much about him, apart from, like, obviously what family members and my mum told me about him. Um, and there were certain circumstances which meant that after the age of five, he couldn't see me until the age of seven, but then after that, it was a choice. Um, and yeah, so anyway, so just like, so my dad got in contact with me on my 21st birthday. He got my number from his sister. He contacted me, which as you can imagine, it was crazy. It was like, I was literally in Malaga with my friend. Um, and shout out Louise, if you're watching this, because she was with me and we were both like, what? Um, yeah, it was my 21st birthday, um, and yeah, I got this text from my dad, and he was like, hi, I'm your dad, basically, and it was like six pages long, when I say pages, this is clearly before iPhones, um, and he was just like, yeah, like, just basically telling me about his life, and about what he'd been up to, and he was like, you really wanted to meet me, so I was like, okay, um obviously like once i digested it like i gave him a call and we had a chat and then we started a relationship um it was easy in the sense that so i was a law student at the time i was in my third year of my law degree and my dad had actually previously been a lawyer so it was like easy in that sense like we had quite a lot in common like we had quite a lot to talk about but it was hard in the sense of like um emotionally connect connecting because he'd missed so much of my life like obviously like 5 to 21 that's what like 16 years um i'd like grown up you know so it was kind of like talking him through certain things and my childhood and experiences and getting to know him and what he'd been up to at that time and i remember it was like and, and i was like i have to ask this question you know like where were you um Anyway, so he took me out for dinner. This was like our first kind of date, daddy-daughter date. He took me out for dinner and I was kind of getting to know each other and, and I said to him like, what happened? Like, where did you go? And he did. He couldn't really give me like a proper explanation. He was just like, you know, I wasn't around. Um, and yeah, like basically he wasn't around and um, he regrets that. He just felt that maybe it would be better if after that period where he couldn't see me where when he could my life would be better without him i mean to be honest i didn't completely buy it but i was like do you know what i can either sit here and go round and round and round in my head or i can be kind of you know what i've always wanted to have a dad like i don't i didn't even at that point remember ever saying the words dad so for me it was like do you know what? i've actually got a dad so let's just live the past in the past and let's just and let's move on so we did and to begin with it was great um he was really full-on he was really interested in my life but that emotional connection was just not there um he struggled to like 
hug me or reach out or but financially he was very supportive so if i needed something he'll be like yep i'll pay for that i'll sort that out now don't get me wrong like i mean i'm not gonna complain about that because that was really helpful but you know i at times i felt like i i needed that i needed more like i needed that emotional connection like i remember once going to his office and there's been a lot of stuff happening in my life and um and i was like crying my eyes out in his office and he just stared at me and like kind of like slid a box of tissues across the desk and it was like okay is this a guy thing is this a i don't know but okay at least you're listening anyway sort of as the years went on he became more and more like distant more and more emotionally unavailable then like financially unavailable um and then yeah he basically just completely became unavailable and i was like telling myself like i was almost like lying to myself i was like no this isn't happening like you wouldn't just come back into my life and then you know and then decide that you didn't want this anymore like surely you wouldn't do that so for two years i basically like i just ignored all the signs all the red flags like he would pretend that he was out of the country just so he wouldn't have to see me and then i would find out that he had done that and i was like oh maybe he just meant this and like he was just doing things he started lying and you know and he just started just becoming very distant um quite abrupt quite rude and i was like no no he wouldn't be doing this maybe he just means that it was getting to the point where I was having to start like almost manipulating him which obviously isn't great but in order to see him so i'd have to try and think of an excuse just so i would be able to see him like oh dad like i'm in the, the area of your office like i've got a coffee like should i bring it up and he'll be like oh okay then so or i would say oh like why don't we go out for dinner like i'll book the reservations i'll make it all happen you just have to be at the restaurant at like, this time i was making it so easy for him but he was just like no like he would say yeah sure like yeah let's do that and then he would say yeah I'll get in contact with you and then he wouldn't he would call me about something completely different so I mean yeah anyway um as of this year and I'm not going to get into all of it um on here but um as of this year he basically decided that he didn't want anything more um and now he's walked out of my life for a second time um and i cannot explain like the pain <laughs> like i just can't and i'm laughing it's not funny but it's just it's just i'm just thinking about how much like i literally can't explain like what that meant to lose him all over again um and all the emotions that i've had to go through and literally it's it's been intense it's been really intense um and there were a couple of things i guess that um has gotten me through this time as difficult as it is and the first one actually was something that someone said to me so when this all happened and my dad was making it clearer and clearer that he just didn't want anything to do with me this year um i was on the phone to one of my friends and um i was in in tesco i remember and i was walking through the different aisles in tesco not concentrating but like shouting because i was venting i was like i was like how could my dad do this to me like how like how could he do this to me for a second time like just drop me without a thought like no text no message no call no nothing like just gone like ignoring my messages ignoring my calls like completely shutting me out like how how can my dad do this how so i'm going over and over and over it and i'm like literally like walking through tesco just like having a massive shout people are looking at me like what is wrong with this girl um and i'm on the phone to my friend and and he says the battle isn't yours it's god's and when he said that it brought so much peace because i was trying to work out why i wasn't good enough for my dad like i was getting a headache and i was you know crying and you know like not sleeping and all of these kind of things because i was trying to work out why am i not good enough for you why have i had to try and force you or manipulate you to see me like why 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 have you just left me why have you just 
gone without a trace like why have you literally just like you know just just stepped away like what is it about me like why and and when he said that it was like oh it was like I could breathe you know because he was I realized wait this isn't my battle to fight I'm not here to convince you that I'm good enough to be your daughter if you can't realize that for yourself then you know the battle is it's kind of lost for me but I need to place that in God's hands and at the time and to be honest I still don't know what that looks like but as a Christian it means for me that I know that I have a heavenly father who loves me unconditionally no matter what the bible says that you know God is a father to the fatherless to the fatherless um and it also says that he places the lonely in families like God is he is compassionate he is loving he is kind he is caring he is my heavenly father the bible says that when we accept jesus christ into our lives and we become christians we can we have a spirit of adoption where we can cry out abba father so it was almost like i'm trying to figure out why my earthly dad doesn't want anything to do with me but it's like well actually no the battle is god's in terms of you know god can bring restoration or he can bring me peace healing whatever that looks like whatever however god wants to you know sort that situation out i i need to do my part by forgiving my dad and then god will take that and he will do whatever he needs to do with it but he is my heavenly father and and that just gave me like such a peace like okay so yeah my real dad doesn't want me but you know what i have a heavenly father who sent his son to die for me on a cross and and that will never change his love for me will never change um so that was the first thing and then the second thing it was going through a grieving process um grieving is i didn't realize that you would ever have to grieve somebody who was still alive like for me that felt like such a like weird concept like for me it's like you only grieve the dead right but no like you grieve when there has been a loss and i lost my dad and even though i had experienced that loss for 16 years and he came back when i was 21 and then he was there for like 10 or 12 years or however long it has been um there's still more loss because now i've actually got a relationship with you and i'm older and you've been around longer this time than you were before so now actually I do need to process this grief and I do need to recognize and accept this is a loss um and my pastor was really good actually in helping me recognize that um you know and and in and you know my pastor he's a, he's a great guy and I'm so grateful for him and you know for me he's like a spiritual father and you know and and he he recognized like the brevity of the situation and and, and how big the situation was but he almost was like he was like i have no words to even explain what is going on in the minds of mind of your dad but what i do know is that you almost have to accept this for what it is and that is that he cannot be the dad that you need he just can't do it for whatever is going on in his heart and in his life and in his mind and he's like i'm so sorry to tell you this but he basically can't he doesn't he, he doesn't have the tools to be your dad and that was really hard because you know you have your parents and you you expect them to be able to be parents you know and it's so hard when you realize okay i need to now accept that you can't be and not just that you can't meet my expectations of what a dad should be but you can't meet any of that because you're now gone and you left without a trace and i can't even like get in contact with you because you've just locked me off sort of thing um and yeah that was that was the second thing that that really got me through oh, sorry this is a hard video the second i guess the second story that i wanted to share um was that i also actually had a stepdad um for two oh, for um just trying to work out the dates that um he, he and my mum were married uh maybe six years yeah so I had a stepdad for six years um 
and we didn't get on at first like i really couldn't stand him you know the whole thing no one you know one really likes their stepdad or stepmom it takes a while okay maybe there are some people so i'm sorry if i'm prejudging but i really just couldn't get on with him um but god really helped me he really worked on my heart and he really um enabled me to form a relationship with him to the point that he called me daughter um he sent me he got me i remember valentine's day he'd get me like a rose and a card to a special daughter so that we ended up building like a relationship it wasn't a great one but we had something there way better than we'd had in the beginning and he actually ended up taking his own life um six years ago and i didn't i didn't grieve that for a long time i i pretended that it didn't happen um for a year i wouldn't talk about it i wouldn't acknowledge it um i i didn't know how to i i, I didn't know how to to process it inside i was so i was angry i was hurt i was frustrated um and him and my mum had separated at the time that he did it and i'd begun to to be honest to see a different side of him and it wasn't a nice side and like he really really hurt my mum um but at the same time there was obviously still like a sense of of loss like another person gone you know and somebody who i refer to as my stepdad um and that was really really difficult that time and and almost accepting what had happened there as well um so yeah so those were kind of like the two instances i guess where i've had to experience fatherlessness with a stepdad and, and my biological dad and you know it's it's not been easy um but honestly by the grace of god i'm telling you this guys like by the grace of God, I am sitting here able to record this video in a sound mind, you know? And if I'm completely honest, and again, due to the grace of God, I don't feel like I'm lacking, you know? I don't feel like I'm missing anything. And not to say that I'm not, because there's going to be you know i now need to think about okay well when i do get married who's going to walk me down the aisle or you know there's other things that are going to come or when it's father's day and you see everybody speaking about their dad and you're like wow and then you remember that pain and you know and so it's not like i'm like oh yeah i'm completely free like i don't care about it no but it's just god has brought me to such a place where he has filled that gap and if it wasn't for my faith i wouldn't be here be i wouldn't be able to say that like i would i don't know where i would be to be honest just because those both of those experiences were extremely tra traumatic um but um i because of who god is because he is a father to the fatherless because he he does place alone in families because he does the bible says that he hears my cries like he he hears me like he even as a nursing mum will forget her nursing baby like he will not forget me um and this is all scripture um and these are all scriptures that i have relied on um and because of that it's like i i have a peace you know i have a peace and i have a joy i have a comfort um in knowing that i don't ever have to lack you know the bible says that he can give he, the bible says that he will give like exceedingly and abundantly over and above what we could ever think or imagine so he can exceed my expectations so where i even had like a certain expectation for my dad and even for my stepdad at times god can exceed all of that so yeah so i just wanted to share that with you guys um I really hope it's an encouragement i know that you know today can be a difficult day for many of you um and if it is like please feel free to reach out to me you know i'm happy to pray for you um and i hope those scriptures have helped you as well and and you know i would say that as well like 
getting into the word of God, you know, reminding yourself of who your heavenly father is. And, and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then that is something that you can have. That is, you know, a prayer that, that, that you can, you can say, you can invite him into your heart, you know, and accept him as your Lord and savior. And he can give you that same peace, um, that, that I have. And, and I'll leave like a prayer at the end. If you, if you guys do want to do that, um, okay guys so that's the end of the video um like i said i hope it's encouraged you um and you know my prayer is that through me sharing my story that you're able to find healing in your story as well okay guys i will see you guys soon